<clears throat> thing. Uh, excitonic state in gallium selenide layer is uh, crystals. It's a work of our group and group from uh, Pridnestrovia State University. Okay, why? What is it with gallium selenide? Gallium selenide, it's a um, monocalcogenite semicond layer semiconductor, and um, it consists of two layers between uh, from uh, gallium and sel selenide uh, um, tetrapods connected by Van der Waals forces. <clears throat> it's make it, it made possible to, by exfoliation or different uh, mechanical or liquid exfoliation, make a very thin layered structure. Uh, gallium selenide has been used as semiconductor, photoconductor, second harmonic gener gener generation crystal, and um, as uh, far infrared conversation material, because it uh, after illumination of this crystal by femtosecond laser signal, it generates uh, terahertz uh, radiation. And gallium selenide uh, can be used in a solar cell and also in battery technology, like one of uh, electrode um, it's used in photo transistors filter emitted transistor light emitted transistor because it has um, very good uh, mobility and uh, high concentration of electrons but we investigated the optical properties like usual optical properties of this material here you can see the um, crystals of gallium selenide. It's quite big and can be um, chipped from the cleavage phase. And we received the mirrored natural phase of gallium selenide. The crystal lattice it looks like in, the, in this light exists two types more types, polytypes, but you, uh, more common, it's a uh, beta and epsilon polytypes. We have the epsilon polytypes in our case because we measured the uh, Raman spectra and observed uh, phonons can allow us to contribute it to the uh, epsilon type of gallium cellular. We investigated the optical properties of this material. We measured the uh, adsorption spectra of uh, a thin crystal. This thickness around 12 microns and adsorption spectra demonstrate the usual behavior. It's shift this temperature decreasing to the high energy. But in near edge region, we observed the features which can be attributed to the uh, excitonic states. Uh, at photoluminescent spectra, we observed the features which corresponded to transversal polariton. And also, we observed the excited state of this polariton, exciton polariton, and uh, calculated Friedberg of this exciton. We received around 120 milli electron volts. Uh, this such so high uh, Friedberg constant of minted energy of exciton. Um, shows us that this exciton, it's more probably it's a Frankel exciton. Uh, and we can see it in, at, at the room temperature. 
<clears throat> at the low temperature, we in the in the adsorption spectra see very sharp line, which correspond to the another exciton. Uh, it's a vanier mode exciton because this exciton has a very low binding energy. It's around 20, uh, 20 milli electron volts. And in the case of uh, um, excitation, our sample, fixed sample, by different lasers, we excit excite by helium cadmium laser and semiconductor uh, laser. And we see very sharp line corresponding to vanier mode exciton and a broad line corresponding to Frankel exciton. And uh, some features which can be corresponded to a B exciton. Uh, the interesting thing that depending on the uh, um, excitation energy, we can see and could not see the Frankel exciton. It um, happens because of uh, difference penetration of laser light into the crystal. And polarization uh, uh, reflection spectra of measured at, at uh, low temperature show us the almost the regular excitonic reflection spectra. We see the ground state and excited state. We calculated the, by dispersion equation this, uh, this reflection spectra and to uh, estimate it, or, or received the parameters of exciton. Uh, background dielectric constant, energy of transversal exciton, longitudinal transversal splitting, a dumping constant and effective mass of exciton. Also, we measured the temp temperature dependence of these peaks of corresponding to the vanier mode and Frankel exciton and observed that um, the vanier mode exciton shift this tem temperature to the higher higher energies, but Frankel exciton shifts to, uh, to this temper temperature uh, decreasing to the lower end energies. We believe it that uh, uh, vanier mode exciton uh, appears due to the interaction between uh, electron in conduction band C1 this hole from conduction band V1. But Frankel exciton appears due to the um, interaction between electron from conduction band C1 and hole through from conduction band V2. And this band has uh, splitting due to crystal field. One splitting at the high energies, and our one splitting its lower energies. Also, at low temperature, we see simultaneously uh, in reflection spectra the features corresponded to Frankel exciton, and these features looks like a spike corresponding to vanier mode exciton. And uh, also, the luminescence spectra um, is um, dependent from, um, the, from the site of crystal where we illuminated by laser light. If we uh, excited with our sample to uh, this uh, uh, mirror surface, which we received by exfoliation or something like this, or chip it, our crystal, uh, we received 
with, with uh, spectra were dominated by uh, um, excitation of one-year mode excitron. If we excited our sample by the back, um, by the front side of sample, we received the spectra were dominated with Frankel X. Also, we calculated the parameters of this Frankel exciton. It's read Rydberg, it's 120 millilitron volts, and calculate the um, effective effective mass of electron and holes in uh, different valent bands and parameters of X. Okay. Um, we observed in this material simultaneously two types of excitons, uh, Frankel and Van Yemot exciton. And we uh, calculated the parameters of these, uh, these excitons and uh, effective mass of electrons and holes in gamma point of, in the center of Brulian zone. It's, it's all, thank you. Thank you for uh, help, Your. Thank you for your attention.